there's a lot that goes into pricing a short-term rental. I mean, we have revenue managers. That is a career that people make a, a career out of in the hotel industry. But short-term rentals are very different than hotels most of the time. You know, if you have a hotel with 200 rooms in it, most all of those rooms are pretty much identical. Whereas, you know, I mentioned the case earlier, we have property A and property B, and they're making different amounts of money, maybe because they have different uh, amenities, maybe because the reviews aren't as good. And so you really have to dig into each property, know exactly what you're working with, and then also know your market. If we don't know our market well, then we don't really have anything to compare to. We could say, if you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. This is the podcast where we talk about raising private money without ever having to ask for money. Well, my special guest today, he's raised his own private money. And in addition to that, he has been investing personally in real estate ever since 2010. Well, the, his current portfolio actually consists of right around 70 properties. And those are spread across three countries, all kinds of cities. I mean, he's unbelievable. Well, he began focusing on short-term rental investments. Uh, through his travels around the world, he was actually exposed. And while he was visiting hundreds of different cities and discovering that he could actually earn three to five times more net income than he could through just doing traditional rentals. So he also has a short-term rental accommodation company, which has actually managed over 30,000 guest arrivals with properties all the way from Canada to Southern Brazil. Well, he loves teaching how he does this short-term rental thing and helps others discover how they can actually multiply their returns and their income. And if you want to live remotely, like the producer of my podcast, Traveling the World, then this guy can tell you how to live remotely and make a lot of money on your short-term rentals. He's also the host of the podcast titled Short-Term Rental Riches, which has been downloaded nearly a half a million times. In just a moment, you're going to meet my special guest, Mr. Tim Hubbard, right after this. Well, hey, Tim. Thank you for joining me here on the show and welcome. Thank you, Jay. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm excited to chat with you. I'm excited to chat with you. I know you've raised your own private money and your expertise, as we just talked about, is in short-term rentals. So before we dive into your expertise and all the experience you've learned about short-term rentals, in 90 seconds, tell us how you got started, where you are now, and how did you get here? Okay, well, here we go. Uh, I read the little purple book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and that changed my mindset. And so my very first investment was a fourplex, long-term rental, but I moved into it. I lived in one of the units and pretty much since that day, since 2010, I never had to pay my own rent, never had to pay my own mortgage. It was always covered for me. I've always loved traveling and along my travels, I discovered short-term rentals. I think that's no secret to people these days, Airbnbs all over the place, right? People are staying in short-term rentals. And I already had a nice portfolio of long-term rentals and I realized, you know what? I can shift some of these into short-term rentals and make a lot more money. So I did that. Uh, I branched out into other cities and other countries. And so I'm coming to you live right now from Brazil where I spent about half the year uh, and the other half in Colombia, but most of my properties are in the US. So we learned a lot. We figured out a lot of tricks into managing properties remotely. And that's what we teach on my podcast now and, and uh, in our community. That is so cool. So we're going to dive into that as to how do you run this type of business and scale this type of business, you know, virtually without you having to be, you know, right there hands on. And so you got interested in the short term rentals. Of course, you experienced it yourself as a short term mm -hmm. renter. And uh, you took it from there. So first of all, let's just, let's just go ahead and dive in. I mean, 
what's the best advice that you would give? And this is not just a one answer, but what's, what's some of the advice you would give to a brand new um, person that's interested in short-term rentals, but hasn't done it before. It's like, where do you start? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, and there's not a one size fits all answer for that. Um, one of the things I like about short term rentals is that we can stay in them ourselves a lot of times, right? That's not like traditional real estate where we're uh, putting the same vinyl plank flooring in there and there's no furniture or nothing like that. And so that part attracted me to short term rentals. But that's something we need to understand before we get in the industry too. Are we investing in a short term rental because we want to use it part as a personal asset? maybe stay there part of the year? Or are we investing in a short-term rental to rent it out and make the most money possible as a 100% investment? So that's a really important first question. I think that's probably the first thing, Jay, that, that we need to figure out. I got you. Well, you know, it's interesting we're having this conversation because right now I'm in the midst or my crew is in the midst of renovating my grandparents' farmhouse uh, that was built in 1928. It's about 2,300 square feet, two story, four bed, two bath. And um, we're wanting to maintain the integrity of that house, meaning the architectural integrity of the mm -hmm. late 1920s. But of course, with having all the niceties done to it. So it's a pretty major rehab. And uh, the first thing I did once I decided to do that was I had a, a friend of mine that's in a, uh, we're in a mastermind together. I had her come here to town and, and at first thing, you know, my, my concern was, well, I don't want to go furnish this house because I've had it as a long-term rental for quite a while. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to go furnish this house, convert it into a short-term rental, unless I knew there was some kind of, what kind of demand that would be for this property. So she did some research for me. I don't know really where she went, but she did some research for me. She says, yeah, Jay, you're in a high demand area. That property is for a short-term rental. So let's start right there, Tim. When you're looking at a, when we're looking at an area. Um, how do you decide, uh, or how do you find out what kind of projected demand there is for a particular property to be a short-term rental? Yeah, fantastic question and crucial question, right? If we don't underwrite a property, right, it's 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 not a good situation. So luckily. Now, years later, you know, after short term rentals become much, much more popular, there are tons of data sources out there that we can use to make our projections. So, of course, historical performance is never a, uh, you know, it's never a sure thing going forward, but it gives us a pretty good idea. Uh, and so there's a couple sources, software programs that are designed just to do this. One comes to mind, or maybe one of the most popular ones is called airdna.co. And this is exactly what they do, Jay. They just pull stats and data and performance from short-term rentals. So they have millions of short-term rentals on their platform. You can pull a report by uh, zip code. Uh, you can pull a report by a city. So you can see it on a nationwide basis. But one of the things we got to be careful with with short-term rentals is that it really comes down to the management. And so you can have two properties right next to each other. And you'll see this if you're out there looking for, if you're using some of these data sources, you'll see that you've got property A, it's three bedroom, two bath, we'll just say, uh, that makes a hundred grand a year. And then we have property B right next to it that makes 150 grand. And mm. so we really have to look further into these properties and figure out what amenities they're offering, you know, are they doing a good job with their reviews? So there's all these little variables that can go into it. But just for starters, a good place to go is to go to one of these dashboards like airdna.co and pull that uh, rough data out of the marketplace. <clears throat> I got you. Well, let's dive on into the analysis. So I'm sure there's many more variables um, to helping you decide whether you should move forward with a property or not to uh, have it as a short-term rental. So walk us through the steps. How do you analyze a potential property as to whether it's, you know, a go or a no, or a no go? Mm -hmm. So again, it comes back to each of our individual strategies, right? So uh, the property where I'm at right now in Brazil, I, I live here about half the, half the year. Uh, and then I do rent it out as a vacation rental, the other half. 
And so for me, this wasn't a hundred percent investment. So if I could pay the bills on it, I, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that because I really enjoy living here. But for others that are looking for a hundred percent investment, I think we need to know what sort of returns we want to expect. Uh, and, and one of the big changes for me from the long-term rental world into the short-term rental world was I was looking at single family homes that were maybe cash flowing, you know, like a, $200, $300 a month. Uh, and this was years and years ago when we had interest rates, we know that they've gone up quite a lot. So that's even harder to do these days. Um, but maybe have an idea of how much cash flow we want to uh, to get back or just having a return. You know, One of the really nice things about a short-term rental is that it has some other good tax advantages. I'm not a tax professional, so make sure you uh, consult your advisor. But a short-term rental, depending on your average reservation length, can be considered an active business, which means that you don't have to be a real estate professional to take a lot of the real estate deductions like bonus depreciation. So it really comes down to our individual um, goals. You know, If someone's got a really high tax bill, they might be okay taking less money. Uh, but for me, that was always cash flow. You know, I wanted to earn the, the most cash flow possible so I could live and, and, and travel around. I got you, that makes a lot of sense. So here's, here's one of the big questions. How in the world do you manage your short term, not only one property, but portfolio of short term rentals virtually? I mean, you live thousands of miles away, right? Um, you know, from most of your properties, how do you do that mm -hmm. virtually? Well, it wasn't always easy. <laughs> I'll say that. Um, you know, when I first got started, we didn't have a lot of these great tools like we have today. Uh, but uh, honestly, it seems like every other day they've got a new tool or something pop coming out in the industry to help us manage remotely. And so managing remotely now is much easier than it used to be. We have automated door locks. So we can create unique codes for all of our guests to make things more secure. We know when they check into our property. We have security cameras to, to make sure that they're showing up to the right property and they're not showing up with 20 people and 10 dogs. Uh, we have property management software, just like we have in the long term or uh, the, the residential uh, uh, industry. We have, we have property management software. We have tools to help us with pricing. So it really comes down to technology. You know, now we have AI coming out that can help us generate responses and do all these crazy things. But it basically just comes down to technology is the one side. And then of course we do have to have a good team on the other end. And in the short term rental world, that team on the ground is our, our housekeepers and our maintenance staff. So assuming we have a good property to start with, in good shape uh, and we did a good job furnishing that we can use all of our virtual systems to help us manage reservations market the property price the property perfectly uh, and then we have our on the ground team to help us with the turnover and things like that i got you so it's a matter of technology and people and the team in place so obviously <clears throat> i'm not going to be managing personally my grandparents home place, farmhouse. So what advice mm -hmm. would you give me on, since I don't want to manage it. Now, uh, my friend tells me that here in our local area, there's actually a company that specializes in managing short-term rentals. Now, of course, they're going to take a good piece uh, of the gross mm -hmm. revenue coming in versus managing it yourself. But <clears throat> quite frankly, I don't even know what these property management companies do or their service, um, what it is that they provide that specializes in managing uh, local, uh, I mean, managing short-term rentals. So <clears throat> what advice, what advice would you give me as to what kind of questions should I ask this property management company that supposedly specializes in short-term rentals? Yeah. Um, you know, so there's a lot of short-term rental companies now. Uh, we, we've had traditional ones in vacation heavy markets for a long time. Um, but, but honestly, we've had so much technology come along that no matter who you're working with, it's a good idea to ask them what sort of tools they use. So do they have a digital guidebook that they're going to send out to your guests that your guests can pull up on their iPhone and see, you know, all the amenities of your house and see your favorite local recommendations? Are they using a pricing software that's going to dynamically change your prices every single day, just like an airline would? 
you know, that's accounting for demand, that's accounting for seasonality, it's accounting for day of the week, uh, all those types of things, events. Uh, so the first piece I would say is just making sure that they're using technology and that they're up to speed with that. Smart locks, security cameras, those things are really, really important. Uh, and then I would also pick their brain about their actual pricing strategies because there's a lot that goes into pricing a short-term rental. I mean, we have revenue managers. That is a career that people make a, a career out of in the hotel industry. But short-term rentals are very different than hotels most of the time. You know, if you have a hotel with 200 rooms in it, most all of those rooms are pretty much identical. Whereas, you know, I mentioned the case earlier where you have property A and property B and they're making different amounts of money, maybe because they have different uh, amenities, maybe because the reviews aren't as good. And so you really have to dig into each property, know exactly what you're working with, and then also know your market. If we don't know our market well, then we don't really have anything to compare to. We could say, you know, maybe you start with your property next month, Jay, and in the next 12 months, you make $100,000. Uh, and then next year, you make $120,000. And, you know, everything looks great, right? The property management says, hey, we increase your revenue 20%. But when the reality might be that your market the average property similar to yours is making $150,000. So the revenue management is a really, really important piece. And it's not, there's there's so many variables that go into it. Um, it really is, it, it's like we have to invest a lot in our properties, not just in the actual physical piece and the, and the furniture, but we have to make sure that our guest experience is very, very good. And so really fast communication times, you know, how, how quickly is this property manager going to respond to your guests is a really important one. Uh, and then a, a quick way, you know, just tip if you're out there looking for short term rental managers is looking at reviews from properties that they already manage. Because that's another thing about the short term rental world is that it's very transparent. Uh, and so when a guest stays in our property, most of the time they leave a review, we always want them to leave a review, a review because it gives us really good feedback. Uh, and so we want to make sure whoever we're working with does a really good job with the guest experience and they get the review piece right. Because even if you get everything else right, if, if you don't have good reviews, it can really crush you in this business. Absolutely. Well, you know, you've got the property management company, but <clears throat> you know, you can have the best property and the best service and the best experience lined up. But if nobody knows about it, it's like, what good does it do? So are mm -hmm. property management companies also skilled and offer services of promoting the property? Or is that really somebody else's job and responsibility to make sure it's getting bookings? Great question. Great question. So they might be, <laughs> but it depends. So, I mean, you have some property managers that might put your property on Airbnb and call it a day. You have other ones that might put it on all of the most important OTAs, we call them online travel agencies. So they'd want to be on VRBO, uh, they'd want to be on booking.com. They'd want to have a way for those guests to book directly. Uh, they would want to be on Google vacation rentals. Google's entered the space now too. So um, that's one side of it is just getting on these basically free marketing channels. Well, I don't want to say free because they do charge you a percentage, um, but they also spend hundreds of millions of dollars to market all the properties on their platforms. And so you will, without a doubt, get reservations from these listing sites, but you want a, a property management company that has a way to book directly too. Uh, the way we do it with our company is that we actually charge a little bit more per night, uh, but the guest pays a little bit less than they would if they were to book through Airbnb. And so our owners uh, and for my properties, we make more at the end of the day while charging the guests the same amount. So great question to ask any potential property manager, just make sure they have a way to book directly. And then they can go one step further in that and make sure that they're sending out emails. Collecting emails is, is the first part from all their guests. There's some really great ways to do that these days too. Uh, but then sending out emails and following up with their guests and trying to get repeat bookings. So yeah, you definitely can do a lot of marketing, but just making sure you're on all the right channels to begin with is, is a good first step. Great advice, Tim. Now you are the CEO of Midtown Stays, which is a short-term rental uh, accommodation company. Is an accommodation company the same thing as a property management company or is there a difference? Um, 
Not a huge difference. Uh, I mean, we're doing the same thing. Um, I just, you know, with our company, it's all about the guest experience. And I think accommodation (laughs) sounds a little more like an experience than management. (laughs) (laughs) I like it. I like it. So, uh, so let's talk about your short term uh, rental management company. What are the list of services that your short term rental company provides? Well, I mean, everything we've been talking about, uh, we do with my properties and we do with all of our partners' properties. We, we call everyone that joins us a, a partner and I'll, I'll explain that why. But, and, and just to go back a step too, Jay, we actually haven't been managing and uh, that, uh, we, we just started managing a year ago, but I've been managing my own properties for years. You know, right. we have tens of thousands of, of reservations with my own properties. And I have, a, I have a podcast, as you mentioned in the intro. And so I, I never got into the business to manage other properties. That was just like, you know, um, I want to build passive income. I want to do it on my own. And so I had to build my own team to be able to do that. Uh, and then it just got to a certain point where there was lots of people reaching out. Hey, can you help manage our properties? And uh, last year we said, Sure, our team's big enough and now we can do that. But there is a big difference between our company and a traditional vacation rental manager is that we are virtual, as you know. And so our whole team's virtual too, for the most part. I mean, I have um, our own teams on the ground that help me with my specific properties. But the way we work is we use all the same systems. We use all the same software. We use all the same policies and strategies that we do with my properties as we do with our partners. And we're also able to to charge a much lower fee for that too, um, because we're not actually on the ground. Uh, Now, another big piece that a really important piece of the puzzle is is the property turnover. And that's making sure we have a good housekeeper. And so that's something that we actually don't do. We don't hire directly those housekeepers and maintenance, but there's tons of fabulous housekeepers and maintenance staff out there. A lot of owners already have that piece. And so we just take over the communication directly with them. We coordinate all that. We use additional software to to monitor, make sure things get cleaned properly. Uh, and by doing that, by doing all these things virtually, we're, we're able to shave a lot off our property management fee, uh, which makes it better for the owners and allows us to keep doing what we're doing. I love it. I love it. You know, my definition of coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. So I'm glad we're having this conversation <laughs> because your company just might be uh, man- just might be handling the management of my grandparents' home place before this conversation that, is that over with. Amazing. So does your does your management company for short term rentals? Do you all also handle the promotion of the property? Um, any social media uh, exposure? I mean, to what extent do you does your company help? promote the property to get booked? Yeah, great question. So we are not doing the social media piece at the moment, aside from Midtown Stays, our company. Um, uh, We do charge a a much lower discounted fee, uh, but there's there's a lot of work that goes into it. Now, we do have some cool tools that we're experimenting with. There's a company called StayFi. It's actually an internet router that can go in each property. Uh, And it allows us to collect all of the emails for our guests. And so we are sending out regular emails to stay in touch. We do have the ability to segregate out properties so they can create uh, specific marketing channels for those properties. So that's kind of our first step. It's something that we're we're diving into a lot this year. But the reality is, Jay, uh, you know, we compare our properties to the market and our properties perform well. And there hasn't been a huge need just in my personal portfolio to do this marketing on my own because we have companies like Airbnb and VRBO that spend these millions and millions of dollars. Uh, And so we're definitely doing it now, but it it wasn't a big priority for my personal portfolio. So that's something we're, we're still getting into a little more. So it sounds like as long as such as your company uh, knows how to, show the property the best on those platforms, such as Airbnb, Airbnb VRBO, et cetera. Um, I guess, I guess part of your, com- <coughs> excuse me, I guess part of your company's service is to make sure that listing is looking as good as it can on those platforms, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's in our best interest. It's in our owner's best interest. And so when we bring on a property, we offer all of our recommendations. We offer all the recommendations. It's actually, it's really easy, Jay, because 
I just offer the same recommendations I do with my own properties. And I have properties in my portfolio scattered across. And so uh, sort of when we're, we're like overlooking this, it's, it seems really challenging to be able to go in and just pick up a property in any market. But I'll tell you that we have so much data available now that we can do this remotely. And many times we know the market much better than the owners do in their own market because they haven't seen the competitor data and they haven't seen, you know, how much this property could earn on 4th of July and, uh, you know, and, and when it should be booked and how far in advance and all those things. And so we have luckily a lot of tools available to, to make sure that we're at the top of our game. It sounds like when you bring on a new uh, client or a new property, it sounds like you're actually giving your own personal checklist as to what the owner of that property should make sure they have in place for it to be a successful uh, short-term rental, right? That's exactly right. And that's, that's why we call it a partnership too, because there are things that we cannot do there on the ground. Uh, we want you to use a certain lock brand. We want you to use a certain camera brand, uh, but we're not going to be the ones there actually installing it. So we have all these recommendations in place. Uh, again, the same ones that I use with my own properties. And as long as those are taking place on the ground, then we can manage it just the, the same way we do our own portfolio. <clears throat> well, you know, everybody loves a checklist, <laughs> Particular, <laughs> yeah. particularly if you are, are an entrepreneur, uh, you love a checklist. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was going to ask you, how does somebody go about hiring virtual team members? Well, so let's say, you know, somebody hires your company. Well, all your team members are virtual, but are there any other virtual team members that need to be hired? Clearly, the housekeeper is one of them. Who else needs to be hired? So actually, the, the virtual piece, we've got that all taken care of. Uh, it's just on the ground, right? So uh, the housekeepers, of course, uh, and, and the maintenance staff. But one of the nice things, again, with the industry, and now that there's millions of properties and people are staying in short-term rentals a lot of times instead of a hotel, is that there's also a huge industry behind it. I mean, all this software and things that we have today, we did not have years ago. And we also have companies that are set up to help you find housekeepers and to help you find maintenance staff. Uh, again, that you can see reviews from them. And so uh, aside from a housekeeper and a local, local handyman, we've got everything else taken care of. That's fantastic. Well, I tell you what, you have just triggered so many questions in my mind, but <laughs> We're just about out of time. So, Tim, I know we have got a lot of people that want to learn more about how you could help them with their own short-term rental management. So how can people get in contact with you? What's the best way for people to continue the conversation with Tim Hubbard? Well, uh, we've got a podcast comes out every week. Uh, it's called Short Term Rental Riches. We were fortunate to have you on uh, recently, Jay, because obviously the financing piece is a big part of that. But you can go to strriches.com. Um, you can see all of our podcasts are on all the different outlets. There's also a property management button there too. So if you did want to chat with us about potentially helping you with your property, we'd be more than happy to do that. Just a few quick questions and we can schedule a Zoom call. Uh, and that's about it. That's the easiest way. Awesome. So everybody, I want you to check this out. www.str, which of course stands for short-term rentals, strriches.com, strriches.com. And uh, Tim and that's his it. team will get you taken care of. Tim, any parting comments and la or last minute advice? Well, I just, you mentioned checklists and we do have an ebook on there, a short-term rental property management ebook. I forgot it's free and it's full of checklists. So anyone can download that too. Uh, that one's actually on restmethods.com. Um, I think you could probably get to it from either one, but that's helpful for anyone getting started or looking to potentially work with the manager because it's got a lot of good questions that you'd want to ask that manager as well. So that other uh, but, URL is, I'm sorry, Tim, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. No, uh, restmethods.com has a ton of resources there. So you can find that, you can find that ebook. I believe we have it on both, uh, both websites, but aside from that, Jay, I would just say that, you know, there's a lot of ways to be successful in, in real estate, right? Um, and short-term rentals are one that can fit with a lot of people's personal situation. They can help with uh, tax situations and they're just, 
a little more fun, in my opinion. And if they can make you more money and they're a little more fun at the same time, I think, um, you know, it's a good, there's a lot of good opportunity left. So, yeah. Well, here's my advice when it comes to short term rentals. If you're listening to this show and you want to get into short term rentals and you've never done it before, don't try to do it by yourself, for goodness sakes. Team up with Tim Hubbard and his team that's already got the processes in place instead of trying to go out there by yourself and figure it out on your own. Tim, thank you so much for joining me here on the show. Thanks for having me, Jay. It was a lot of fun. You got it. Well, there you have it. Another amazing episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. We really appreciate your uh, subscribes and ringing that bell if you happen to be watching on YouTube. If you're listening on uh, Apple or Spotify, uh, be sure and follow so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming amazing episodes. So thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's j-c-o-n-n-e-r.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.